So a couple of weeks ago, I released a video on the brand new Rig Expert Phobos SDR. And in that video, I highlighted some issues which can happen with certain software settings. Well, kind of. Now the video's approach was from a general user's point of view, plugging it in, attaching the appropriate antennas, and then scanning through the bands. Now it was shown clear in the video that the Phobos SDR had some severe issues when receiving on certain bands with certain software settings. Now I did also show in the video that changing these certain settings would improve those issues, although that was rather short. Now some of you fully grasped the capabilities of the Phobos SDR and rightly suggested the correct settings to use to have a better experience. Now the setting I am referring to here is the sample rate, and that's a setting within the SDR software itself. For some of the issues, the sample rate setting can alleviate those issues. However, a general user or even a newcomer to the SDR hobby possibly may not understand the requirement for these settings, and this was not made clear on any marketing for the Phobos SDR from Rig Expert. Now, after I released the video, I emailed Rig Expert with a few questions. Now, they replied to my email with the answers to my questions and also provided some comments on certain parts of my video. Now, in this video, I'll go through that email and any suggestions that have been made which should improve the performance or alleviate any issues noted in the last video. So, the first question here I asked Rig Expert. Who is the target audience of this product, i.e. the Phobos SDR? Now their answer to this question was radio amateurs, scientists, developers, hackers, scanners and scouts. Now the next question I asked was where does the Phobos SDR excel in performance compared to other SDR devices? Their reply to this question was just to emphasize the main points of the Phobos SDR, such as 50 MHz instantaneous band, which I believe means 50 MHz at the same time, and also up to 6 GHz coverage, and that's all along with a 14-bit ADC. Now generally, I do not like to compare two SDR receivers in a video, as I do not like to favor one manufacturer over another. Well, that's normally. Question three, why was there no gain control implemented on the HF ports? Of course, the reason I ask this is because having gain controls on hardware itself could actually improve any of those mirror signals that I was seeing. Their response was the Phobos SDR design provides the gain controls only for RF input. The gain controls don't be provided for HF1 and HF2 inputs. Phobos SDR is a UHF receiver and it's not a full featured HF receiver. HF1 and HF2 are not full featured HF inputs, rather they are just wideband auxiliary direct sampling inputs. Comparing the Phobos SDR to HF receivers is not quite correct. From our point of view, comparing the Phobos SDR with HF receivers is not correct. Now notice here that Rig Expert have stated that the Phobos SDR is a UHF receiver and it's not a full featured HF receiver. Now this grates at me a little and the reason for this grating is that on the specification sheet under suitable applications we have ham radio, HF and VHF and UHF is listed. Also below this it states high performance HF. So from the specification sheet a potential new buyer would think that the Phobos SDR is a high performance HF receiver and would perform comparable to some top tier receivers considering the price point that this is set at. Of course, this is all relative to the user's expectations being assumed from the specification sheet. Unless, of course, you know what you're looking for and start to investigate the block diagram. Now, don't get me wrong, it is actually a high-performance SDR. Now, question four, I asked, why is the center frequency fixed, at least on HF when using lower sample rates? Essentially, they're aware of this feature and they're working on it. The last question I asked them, question five, is how can I demonstrate the Phobos SDR so that the issues shown in my videos do not occur? Now, rather than reading all of this out, let me summarize. So Rig Expert's suggestion would be to use the 
USDR or micro SDR if you want to pronounce the U symbol, or it could even be Mu SDR. Who knows? Now, the reason for using USDR is that it is the only software with narrative, which I think they mean native, support for the Phobos SDR. Of course, SDR Sharp and SDR is also supported, but from what I can gather, the modules are not up to scratch. They do not work as well as they should. Now, for SDR I know for a fact that this was not created by the author of SDR. However, hopefully soon we'll see a module from him that fully supports the Phobos SDR. To cope with mirror signals or saturation, it's also recommended to tune away from strong unwanted signals. Adjacent channel leakage is especially visible for wideband sensitive receivers, which the Phobos SDR actually is. Another recommendation, as mentioned in my original video, would be to either use external attenuators, bandpass filters, or band stop filters. And lastly, the sample rate should be set to 50 or 80 megahertz. Now they reference some particular points in the video and at 5.38 in the video, I was talking about mirror signals using the RF port. Rig Expert's recommendation would be to reduce the sensitivity here and use some external attenuators. At 7.03 in the video, the demonstration was with the sample rate not recommended by Rig Expert. Now this was clearly mentioned by a few of you guys in the comments of the video. So on the HF band, a sample rate of 50 or 80 MHz should be selected and that should improve any aliasing. If you do want to use lower sample rates, however, then you will need to implement some external inline low pass filters. At 709, I mentioned that the gain controls only work on the RF port and not on the HF ports. Rig Expert have stated that I should not compare the Phobos SDR with other HF receivers. At the timestamp of 840, I was demonstrating receiving HF using a sample rate of 8 MHz. And Rig Expert have said, as they did previously in the email, that I should use 50 or 80 MHz. Now I'll test this and show you in the video shortly. Now currently, SDR, HDSDR, and SDR Sharp cannot visualize raw, directly sampled HF signals correctly. Now this is why we're seeing the mirror signals when viewing the full HF band, even with the higher sample rates. Now just to inject a comment here, I think it would be wise for Rig Expert to only suggest the use of USDR if it is currently the only software which displays the spectrum correctly. Otherwise, other users will do what I've done here with other SDR applications. Well, at least until other applications work as they should with the Phobos SDR. Now there are some other bits and pieces of information in the email, much of which is just duplicates of what was said earlier. Now if you do want to read the whole email, then you can just pause the video on each of these slides in order. Surprisingly, Rig Expert also addressed the marketing issues, well, some of them, but did let me know how well the Phobos SDR has sold throughout the world and to the Ukrainian military, who are apparently really satisfied with the product. I guess they actually do have specific needs and it'd be interesting to know exactly what they're using it for. Most likely, we'll never know. They also state that my video, in their opinion, insufficiently disclosed product features and benefits that justify the price, which of course can question the attractiveness of the Phobos SDR. And to be honest, that is the last thing that I ever wanted to do. I do not ever want to influence people not to buy something because of what I personally think. However, my video showed my personal experience and the settings used within the software shown in the video. Nothing was hidden, nothing was done off camera, nothing was done off screen recording. You saw what I saw in that video. Now here's the thing, a small sentence, but it means quite a lot. They go on to say that at the same time, they admit that they sent poor information about the product specifics to me. Now, before we look at a couple of examples, let me summarize this video so far. Now, this is my personal opinion, and I welcome anyone to comment on this video if you think something different to me. However, I will not accept targeted negative comments towards me, though. We are all here to learn and share our knowledge together as we enjoy this exciting hobby. 
Personally, I think that Rig Expert summed up the Phobos SDR in this email. It is a highly sensitive SDR, which is more geared towards UHF and upwards for signal receiving. This is not an SDR which should be purchased for general scanning through the HF bands. You'll also have to accept that this SDR is extremely sensitive and it lacks a full-blown stack of filters for each supported band. And you will need to be prepared to add your own band stop filters, pass band filters and attenuators for any of those bands that you're interested in receiving. Now personally, I believe that this information should be portrayed in more detail in the marketing and specification sheets. This will lead to the right people buying this product for the right reasons and not buying it with expectations that will not be fulfilled. So here we're testing the HF port looking at 40 meter handband with a sample rate set to 50 megahertz on the USDR software. To me, with this test, it appears that 40 meters is appearing as it should with no strong stations from the medium wave band bleeding into this band. 10.30 or 9.30 uh, UTC, 10.30 clock time on a Saturday morning, a run for the hour approximately. Um... Now the audio sounds a little digitized to me and I did try altering the audio sample rate, but it did not improve it at all. Also, the scope in waterfalls resolution is not as fine as I would have liked. It just appears to be too blocky. Maybe that can be changed in software somewhere, but I doubt it. Tuning down to the really low frequencies to take a listen to NDBs, and yep, we can find them, but again, the resolution of the scope is not that great. And I believe this is a byproduct of having such a large sample rate. Maybe there's a setting in USDR, but I've not found it as of yet. Now, if we take a look at the entire HF band, well, all 25 megahertz of it using a 50 megahertz sample rate, we do not see the mirroring on the right hand side as we did before on SDR++. Now, incidentally, SDR++ still shows the mirror signals, even with a 50 megahertz sample rate. But when zooming into a specific band lower than 25 megahertz, we can see there are no mirror signals, or at least that I could see. And moving on to the VHF and UHF bands, I wanted to test to see if the FM broadcast band was still appearing in the airband while using a 50 or 80 megahertz sample rate. Now, unfortunately, even with the LNA and VGA control set to minimum, I could still see the FM broadcast stations within the airband. So, as Rig Expert said in the email, and as I said in the last video, you will need to use an attenuator, band stop filter, or a band pass filter for these scenarios. Now the same goes for USDR software, seeing FM broadcast stations within the air band and even up on the two meter handband with a sample rate set to 50 megahertz. Of course, if you start to adjust the sample rate, these mirror signals will move around. So in this case, a filter network or attenuator network will be advised. Well, there we go, guys, what do you think? Let me know down in the comments if you think purchasing the Phobos SDR, knowing you'll most likely need external filters and attenuators, would affect you from buying it. Of course, I still need to perform some sensitivity tests, comparing how much more sensitive the Phobos STR is, say, over other SDRs that cover the same frequency range. Now, if you have any ideas of what physical tests I could perform or that you'd like to see, then let me know down in the comments section below. Anyway guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.